it seems like you're always uh, on hold when you're in the middle of something important. You're just placed on hold. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Luke Fodor. Yes. Can I get six of those? Right. Super. Um, and uh, my email address is Luke L U K E dot Fodor at St. Luke's Church, Jamestown, that arc. That's S T as in Saint Jamestown. Yes. St. Luke from St. Luke's. I know, I know. Anyway, let me confirm it for you, right? So it's L U K E, Luke, and then Fodor, dot Fodor, F as in Fred, O as in uh, odor, uh, D as in Delta, O as in odor, and R as in Roger. Yeah, Fodor, like the, like the travel guides. Right, right. Super. And that's St. Luke's Jamestown, S T L U K E S, Jamestown.org. Great. So now the confirmation will come out. Super. Great. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Okay, bye. Welcome to St. Luke's and Grace Episcopal Churches this week. Sorry you had to see all that. Um, had an urgent thing I needed to do before I forgot, and well, just had to get it done. Don't you hate having to confirm things? Um, I, I constantly will spend time confirming my, my email address, and I still don't get the emails, and I have to call back. People, my last name has a heart, has a, it's hard for people to really hear that. I've gotten things addressed to me, uh, Luke Fodor, P-H-O-T-O-R. Uh, I've gotten them uh, spelled at most regularly F-O-D-E-R, no matter how many times I say, oh, anyway, anyway. The whole, the whole confirmation process is a laborious one and it's frustrating. The theme this week is confirm, not conform. Um, and this is a, a, a appropriate thing because I think what's going on in these readings um, that we hear today this on the second Sunday of Easter, often called Low Sunday, um, partly because we're, we had the highs of Easter Sunday and then now there's less energy and um, it's a different kind of changing moment. Uh, and so we see the story of Thomas, Doubting Thomas. And um, I don't like to think of him as Doubting Thomas, but Confirming Thomas. He wanted to be sure that he understood what was going on. And so it's a little like confirming uh, over the phone uh, some sort of message you're receiving to ensure that you get the email. Uh, I know I'm not gonna get that email. That confirmation email won't come through because Sometimes we don't listen very clearly. This week, I invite you to listen clearly as we engage with this story uh, of, of Doubting Thomas, or I like to say Confirming Thomas. Welcome to St. Luke's and Grace Episcopal Churches this week, where the theme is Confirm, Not Conform. Well. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, our God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles 4, 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned were held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it all at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven then. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Peace be with you. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. My Lord and my God, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Oh, hi. I just discovered this most delightful book by an author, Dr. Seuss. I'm St. Thomas, by the way, and we didn't have Dr. Seuss when I was a kid. But as I was reading, this Dr. Seuss man, he gave me an idea. I thought I'd tell my story in a poem, kind of like what he writes. This is about what happened when I met Jesus after Easter. Well, we had all gone into hiding and wondered what to do. Our lives, our dreams all broken and God seemed absent too. Now saviors are not supposed to die, but save us with God's power. At least that's what I used to think before that strange encounter. We had not trusted Mary's word, the Lord I've seen she was proclaiming. I was absent the night he came to the upper room, but when I returned, the disciples, they were exclaiming. He had spoken, they told me, here's what he said, peace be with you, my friends. They must have looked all startled then, cause peace, he said again. Amazed, I remembered his word the night before he died. God's peace he'd bring to us in life. Our joy'd be multiplied. But then a strange thing happened. Why, Jesus appeared once more. He came up right before me without opening the door. No condemnation in his eyes, no judgment on his tongue, no halo. No overwhelming light, just presence and wounds and love. My knees, they shook, my eyes were blurred, a realist I had always been. In his presence, I blurted out my Lord and God who'd risen.
So as you've already heard, the theme of this week's service is confirm, not conform. That happens to also be the curriculum that we're using with our confirmation class here at St. Luke's. I particularly like this curriculum. It's a bit dated now, but it begins with a invitation to the kids not to be conformed to the various patterns in which they find themselves, but to really invite them to confirm uh, the faith that's, that's in them. Um, it begins with uh, a famous scene from the 1999 film, um, The Matrix, where Morpheus stands there with his two hands and he asks Neo, you take the red pill and you wake up. And like nothing ever happened. Or you take the blue pill, you go back to sleep, or you, we wake up to the reality of the world. And I love that because that's kind of how we're invited uh, kids to be sometimes, that we, um, when we learn and we engage with things, we can either get to the bottom of the story, which means we may engage with some, some difficulties, some, some pain, and some woundedness, or we can kind of act like it never all happened. I think that's precisely where Thomas is in today's gospel story. He, he misses out on this encounter with Jesus, and so he comes back into it and, and finds that, that they've had, that others have had this experience that he hasn't had. And I think we sometimes get down on Thomas. We think, hey, just, just conform to the rest of the disciples. They had the experience. You should have it too. You just claim, claim it because they had it. But I think that's kind of cheating. I think that's what Thomas says. Like, no, no, I'm getting to the bottom of this. I'm not going to take the, the red pill and just be like, everything's normal. Give me the blue pill. I really want to understand what this faith means. In fact, I, unless I can you know, see and touch the wounds myself, I won't believe. And I think that's the point of what Jesus is asking us to do in this, this Easter season. It's not good enough to have someone else's faith chosen for you. That's what we tell our kids in confirmation class. You need to choose the faith for yourself, which is precisely what Thomas is doing. He's saying, oh great, you had this amazing resurrection experience. I need to have that same experience. I need to engage in the story in the same way. I need to have that because that's how I'm going to make my faith real. That's how I'm going to confirm it and not just to conform to your experience. It really rests with other parts of scripture that we see. We see, we hear scripture that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Not listen to your friend who tasted and saw that it was good, but you taste and you see it. And that's exactly what this is about. Thomas isn't going to just rely on the, the witness of his friends and say, okay, it's good, go ahead and do it. Mikey likes it, you know, it's good for you to have. That's the point of what we're talking about here. The life of faith only makes sense if we're willing to get to the bottom of it, if we're willing to live it. And so Thomas's encounter um, is, a, is a promise to us, I think, that we too, if we keep pushing and agitating, that we too will experience the risen Lord. And it'll probably come in a similar way when we encounter the, the wounds and the failures and the frustrations. It's a promise that God will always show up in those places because that's the God that we love and serve. This isn't a God that they thought, a God of great power and might who was going to come in and kick butt and clean everything up. This is a God who cleans up the dirty messes, who gets down with us and encounters us it invites us to be encountered by God in the same way. So in this season of Easter that continues, and it's not just a one Sunday, but it's six, seven, eight Sundays, depending on the year. Um, and this is a year where we get to really engage with this opportunity to confirm our faith and not just conform to our parents' perspective of it or the fact that we're supposed to go to church in this way, but for us to really see that it's good. Yes, we need witnesses that will tell us about their experience, but the best witnesses don't just say, here it is, trust me. They say, hey, look what's happened in my life. Don't trust me, try it out. And I think that's what Thomas is for us. A witness that says, try it out. Taste and see, touch and feel. Make it real in your own life. So as we continue to reflect on this, this theme of confirming not conforming. I invite you, too, to confirm this message in your life. Engage with it this week. Amen. Will you?
join our hearts and voices in praying for ourselves, our neighbors, the church, and the world. My Lord and my God, amen. Alleluia. As your people living in your world, we ask you to manifest your presence in our lives in tangible and surprising ways. We pray to you, my Lord, my God, all, amen. Alleluia. We pray for your followers throughout the world that they have an experience of your love for themselves and a genuine experience of love with each other. We pray to you, my Lord and my God. Amen. Alleluia. We pray for those in authority throughout the world that they, sensitive to the needs of those they serve, create environments in which truth and justice flourish. We, we pray to you, my Lord and my God. Amen. Alleluia. We bring before you those who are suffering from spiritual or physical pain and those paralyzed with anxiety and despair. Come into their lives with powerful healing and into their hearts with words of comfort and peace. Hold these dying today close to your heart and welcome them with internal light and life. We pray to you, my Lord and my God. Amen. Alleluia. Jesus, our Redeemer, help us to see you with new eyes, love with new hearts, and hope with new faith until Easter becomes our way of life. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.